Letter to Gijo Bo. I have carefully reviewed your question about the Buddhist doctrines. The blessing of the Lotus Sutra can only be understood between Buddhas. It is the kind of enlightenment that even the wisdom of Shakyamuni Buddha's emanations throughout the Ten Directions can barely fathom, if at all. This is why, as you well know, the great teacher Tian Te construed the character Mayo, of Myoho Renge Kyo, to mean that which is beyond ordinary comprehension. The Lotus Sutra proclaims a great diversity of practices, but only Tian Te, Miao Lo and Dengyo were able to understand the heart of the Sutra. Among these men, the great teacher Dengyo was the reincarnation of Tian Te, and therefore well versed in the Tian Te doctrine. Nevertheless, he sent envoys to Tang China on many occasions in an effort to resolve the common doubts of others concerning the Sutra. The essence of the Sutra is the mutual possession of the Ten Worlds, 100 Worlds and 1000 Factors, and the 3000 Realms in a single moment of life. This is a doctrine of great importance which was revealed in the work entitled Maka Shikan. The teaching of the Juryo chapter bears special significance for me, Nichiren. Tian Te and Dengyo understood it in a general way but did not reveal it in words, and the same was true of Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu. The Jigaj section of the chapter states, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, not hesitating even if it costs them their lives. I, Nichiren, have called forth Buddhahood from within my life by living this sentence. This means that I myself embodied the three great secret laws, or the reality of the three thousand realms in a single moment of life, implied in the Juryo chapter. But let us keep this to ourselves. Dengyo, the great teacher of Mount Hiei, journeyed to China to receive instruction in the profound meaning of this sentence from the Sutra. Single, of, single-mindedly, means the one pure way, and, mind, indicates all phenomena and existences. The great teacher Tian Te explained the Chinese character for, mind, by saying that it consists of four brush strokes representing the moon and three stars and implies that the mind that resides in the effect, of Buddhahood, is pure and clean. My interpretation of the passage is that, single, stands for Mayo, mystic, mind, for Ho, La, desiring, for Ren, lotus, Si, for Ge, flower, and, Buddha, for Kyo, sutra. In propagating these five characters of Myoho Renge Kyo, one should not hesitate even if it costs them their lives. Single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, also means to see the Buddha in one's own mind, to concentrate one's mind on seeing the Buddha, and that to see one's own mind is to see the Buddha. I have attained the fruit of Buddhahood, the eternally inherent three bodies, by living this sentence. In achieving this I am sure I surpass Tian Te and Dengyo, Nagarjuna and Mahakashyapa. The Buddha admonishes that one should by all means become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. This is why I have emphatically urged you not to hesitate to give up your body and your life for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, Nichiren, the 28th day of the 5th month in the 10th year of Bunei, 1273. Background. Although this letter is short, it contains some very important principles. It was written on May 28, 1273, to Gijo Bo, who had been the Daishonin senior at Sichoji Temple. Only about a month before, Nichiren Daishonin had written, The True Object of Worship, in which he had revealed the object of worship in terms of the law and the correct practice for enlightenment in the latter day. The letter to Gijo Bo restates the profound contents of the true object of worship, though much more concisely. In Buddhism the mind, besides the conventional implications of heart, psyche and spirit, indicates one's life itself. Buddhism teaches us the law of life, and it shows us how we can develop our inherent Buddhahood. In The True Object of Worship, Nichiren Daishonin elaborated on observing the mind. He expounded the object of worship as the key to understanding one's mind. Buddhist practice is prerequisite for us to see our minds, that is, to manifest our innate Buddha nature. First, Nichiren Daishonin explains the correct way of practice, and then he states that he appeared in this world in order to establish true Buddhism, the essence of the Buddha's teachings, for all mankind. The Daishonin says that, of all the chapters of the Lotus Sutra, the Juryo, 16th, chapter is especially important to him. He quotes a passage, single-mindedly yearning to see the Buddha, 
they do not begrudge their lives. And notes, I, Nichiren, have called forth Buddhahood from within my life by living this sentence. This means that I actualize the three great secret laws, the embodiment of Ichin and Sanzen in the Juryo chapter. He concludes that the ultimate meaning of this passage is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo of the three great secret laws, to which he was enlightened but which remained only in his heart. This is the first mention in his writings of the three great secret laws, the invocation, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the object of worship, the Dai Gohanzen, for whose inscription he was preparing, and the place of worship, the sanctuary of the true object, whose construction he would entrust to his disciples. He elaborated on these three in, Requital for the Buddha's Favor, written in 1276.